And I think a big part about the internet too is you can't tell the tone of voice in which something is delivered. Yeah. So when someone's like, that's a cool video game, you don't know if they're like, that is a cool video game. But like when you get to go out to events like this and, and actually see a person come up to you and be like, oh man, like you like the same thing I like, and we have this instant connection, and it's yeah. like it's like finding a friend online that you're like, later I will address that friend. I have this friend who will talk to me every so often, but later this friend and I are going to hang out. So Yeah, when you get a message like Drunken Master Paul, you're sick. I don't know what tone that is. Yes. <laughs> You're sick! Or, You're sick. Dr. Feinstein, I told you this is an inappropriate forum to tell me this. <laughs> Please phone call, text message, and stop on the YouTube wall. You're my lawyer. Yeah. And you know, actually, with, with that in mind as well, I think this would be an excellent opportunity to, uh, to thank Brian from Game Deals thank and all of you guys thank you, for making the first thank you for Retro Gaming Expo happen, for making it awesome. And for helping us make sure it happens every damn year. Yeah, so the first one was pretty good. Yeah, when, when he told, first told me he was going to make this event, I said, that's adorable. And then I figured out how much of it I could push my face onto. And um, <laughs> from the poster up, oh, I've managed pretty well. Yeah, so far, yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. awesome. So. Every pie. Every pie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try the pie, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, we can open up. Do you want questions? Do you want any? Sure. Sure. Let's open up. Sure. Oh, oh, we have videos. Videos first or questions first? Let's make it a sandwich. Let's make it a question video sandwich with the video as a sweet, delicious meat. All right. Uh, that would be Metal Jesus. That would be Metal Jesus? Yes, yeah, we also call him Sweet Delicious Meat. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's like creepy. Is that like your folk rock name? Have you just met me? We're not in the basement anymore. Hello, there's people here. <laughs> This is why we can't I don't know how to take that. This is why we can't yeah. have nice things. That's not the first time you've said that, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. So let's <laughs> open it down. Open it up to questions. We've got one right in front of All right. So uh, Tim Schaefer started out this uh, Kickstarter project to get a new adventure. That's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just wondering what uh, you all think of it so far. What's good next? Number one, I'm a huge Tim Schaefer fan. I've loved everything he's done. Two, fingers are crossed for another Grim Fandango. Sweet God! And three, I think it was a brilliant move because it's proving that a lot of the uh, sort of preconceptions the game industry has these days about what genres are and are not viable, which ones are and are not dead, it's showing that a lot of them are wrong. It doesn't always have to be an FPS or a big budget AAA title to make money, and he's just proven that. Point and click adventures, 2D games, hand drawn art are still alive. We're all here to prove that. And uh, I think that he's doing an amazing thing, and I wish him all the best of luck, and I'll be buying the copy the day it comes out. Yeah, I, I would agree. As a matter of fact, uh, just this week they announced that Brian Fargo, who created the original Wasteland, and also the original Fallout, is doing another Kickstart event where he's going to make uh, Wasteland 2. So that, if you're an old school D&D RPG fan, that's pretty big news. It's kind of cool to be able to bring that back when most publishers wouldn't even touch it. Yeah, I think it's been a really cool resurgence of stuff too, just with that ability like, to, to find their fans that are still out there and be like, now that you've grown up and found what money is, send some back, <laughs> and let's have some fun again. Money? Yeah, well, I'll tell you about it later. Okay, it's, it's that digital thing that you exchange for products on Amazon. Um, <laughs> Uh, awesome video games. Uh, the idea came from, um, well, the desire to make videos for the internet came first, and then I had to come up with a subject. And we actually tried out another thing first, which is like sort of a Three's Company parody uh, that just had all gay men instead of um, one gay man. Was it? No, you must have used straight the original. It was bad. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, then we, uh, but then I, the, the, the idea of video, awesome video games just was like a secondary thing. I thought it'd be fun to, we like Nintendo and we like Bill and Ted and Twain's World, so we just kind of parodied that and threw it together and it was, uh, we wrote it as we shot it. Um, so it, it was very organic. But then uh, Video Games Awesome came about because, um, well, we shot a DVD commentary for Awesome Video Games and we liked the way that we were able to sit in front of a camera on a couch and just kind of, it felt comfortable. And it was what we always do all the time and just kind of, you know, joke around and uh, then I realized how easy it was to make and that it could probably actually make me money uh, by being able to make videos constantly and that's what we did. Everybody does that, so you just sit down and watch them play. 
Thank you. That's what we were trying to get at. That, it, what's, uh, you're, you were on Facebook. You are saying you're going to be here, weren't you? Yeah, my name is Sarah. Sarah. I wish I'd said Sarah now. I didn't have the guts to <laughs> guess it I, if I got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's part of the appeal of your show, too, is that, like, the, the friends aspect of it is, is hanging out with your buddies. It's kind of the mystery science theater thing. It's like, yeah, hey, that's what we do, except they're doing it to a slightly better degree of which our talents allow. So let's watch them. <laughs> which makes it our biggest challenge, I think, for the show is maintaining freshness among our group is because that is kind of our, that's like our, our hook is the dynamic that we have among each other because we aren't just a few hosts that a company brought together to play video games and put together a show like some YouTube channels have been doing recently. Um, we actually are buddies, and uh, so that's, try not to get sick of each other is what we have to be careful of. And a cool part of that is it's like, uh, what I've watched other videos as well, it's like, you're doing what I love, so it's almost like I'm hanging with new friends. Yeah. You know, watching do what we do, just hanging out and playing games, what these guys are too, and so I'm not feeling so alone. And try not to piss off too many people with my opinion. Just try to be relatable. Yeah, no, just go for it, piss them off, give <laughs> up on that train. <laughs> I, I find part of the problem with that too is trying not to um, in-joke yourself to death. Because yeah. once you find something that works, once you find a hook that, that goes forward, you want to just like, all right, well, let's just run with that joke because that is guaranteed fodder right there. But you, you have the effort put into keeping something fresh and keeping something moving along is actually significantly more than most people think you'd have to put into it. Do we have, do we have more questions? You indicate with a hand. It's like grade school. <laughs> That's a good one. For those of you who couldn't hear, what gets more attention, loving a game or hating a game? That's a good question because before I put up every video, I'm nervous because you never know how the audience is going to react. Are they going to love it? Are they going to hate it? You don't really, you never actually kind of know. And um, we always talk about games that we absolutely love to death, like that's our big thing on the show. But uh, I recently did an episode on games that I hated. and. Um, that was a really unusual one, and uh, I, but I, I put a positive spin on it, but I thought everybody was going to think I'm, you know, like, oh, bashing on games and stuff, stuff like that, but it's been actually, in recent memory, the most popular episode I've had, so uh, I might do a sequel to that in the future, but it's, it's kind of strange, you never know what's going to, how, you know, how a video's going to play to your audience, so. Yeah, that's my I, I, I watched that video and I did halfway through say, you chipper son of a bitch, because it's every single, every single game is like, I hate this game. Now here's why it's awesome. I'm like, God bless you. Good way to go. And that's the thing, I didn't want to do, like, I wanted to do my spin on a game that I, I didn't like, and, uh, you know, the Angry Video Game Nerd, he does his thing, which is absolutely awesome, but my thing was just to do it on a, you know, absolutely, you know, games that I don't like, but you secretly do like. You know, like you, you, me and Rob would talk about games that we hated and say, oh my god, remember the amazing music of that? Remember how much we hated it, actually? You know, like, it's kind of funny. And that's, that's another thing, is that somehow, just the way that our personalities run, even if it's something we absolutely hate, it becomes nostalgic. Because you hated it, but it was at a good time in your life where you could enjoy it's true, hating it's true. And, and make it fun. So, I think the important thing to remember with, uh, with video games is that people love them. And that even though we like to rail on video games occasionally and, and rant, uh, it must be kept in mind that the reason your audience is there is because they love video games, and that that's the core fundamental principle that you have to... Uh, and the other thing, I guess, is to remember that there are people behind the video games. And that, um, not to get too personal with uh, attacks on video... The best example I can come up with is Duke Nukem. We recently played on the show, and we went into it total fanboys, like, we were so excited, we, we made this big uh, thing co coming up for the show, we were, we were thinking it was going to be one of our biggest, most amazing episodes, and you could see throughout the show, from beginning to end, it went from elation to just this dejection, we were just like, slouched and tired and sad, <laughs> and, um, but at the same time, we actually had some viewers who worked on the game as well, and it was important to keep in mind, as we went forward with our criticisms, that there were people that poured a large amount, Duke Nukem especially, a large amount of their life into it, and it isn't necessarily their fault. Like, they probably did their very best on their component of the game, and um, I, I dislike reviewers who go kind of skew vitriol at a game to a point where it's, not not with James, James is comedic, and I, he doesn't mean anything personally, you can tell he doesn't mean personally against the creators of the game, but um, I think that's my point. It's just that you can't make it too, Acidic or you know, horrible, uh, and that's it. I, th 
I, I think for us, we we like to, have to show a bunch of positivity on our show and energy, and we also like to be respectful as well because we did work in the, the gaming industry, and so, um, and we were still friends with several of those people, especially on Facebook, and so, um, but we, we also don't try to take on games that are that are easy targets either, so. Yeah, one thing I liked about your channel before uh, I even joined it was anytime you made a, uh, a negative comment, you always backed it up. It was like a factual, like um, you say, I don't like this about the game and here's why. Yeah. It wasn't just this game sucks because then you're a commenter on YouTube. Yeah, that's so easy to do too. Like, this, yeah. this game sucks. It's easy. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. For example, yeah. Superman 64. Go! <laughs> that was the main man. Best game yeah. ever. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I like rings, I like flying. Good if, day. If you could combine the two on a single level, that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to do, you want to do um, any setup on any particular videos that we might have ready? So that we can guys, you guys show something? Do, do we have one from everybody? I, that's a rumor. That's a rumor? Yeah, I, I think, think I think people might like videos if they're sure. clapping yeah. and hollering. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty good clapping and hollering, but I'd really like them to do it with the power to make people downstairs wonder what the hell's going on. So we could do a little more. That was more cow! I like that better. I like that better. Do we, do we have stuff queued up that we might be able to do? We're trying. Who are we starting with? Let's start from the end and work back. Alright. To me, the most important person here on this side. Little Jesus. That one. Do that one. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll duck our heads down here. Yeah. Little yeah, Jesus, I'm back again, and we're going to be heading down to Longview, Washington to see and meet up with John Hancock, the immortal John Hancock, who did yeah. actually sign the Declaration of Independence, and I believe was the inspiration for the Twilight Zones, because he's actually a vampire. He could be, but he's got an awesome video game collection. And this time, though, you know, we've, we've upgraded our car. We have upgraded the wheels. Broken Master Paul. Retro car! Oh, yeah. 2012 Dodge nice. Challenger, I'm so stoked about this car. I'm a kind of retro guy, love the muscle cars, just got my new wheels and we are going to haul my ass down long even faster than we ever have before. Let's get this bitch on the road. It's it! <laughs> Unusual stuff. I feel like you know we came down this retro car. Let's just keep the theme going. And you have some really interesting and valuable stuff here that a lot of people just don't get to see. Yeah. Um, first thing is uh, Sega CBX. And the Sega CBX was uh, kind of a later release. Uh, Sega made a small, compact version of the Sega CD and Sega Genesis into one tiny device. It was quasi-portable, I mean, you still need a TV to, to play it on, but it actually could run off batteries. And um, it, uh, it, it kind of doubled as a, a portable CD player and, and a game system. And uh, it was three to four hundred dollars when it came out, depending on where you bought it. And uh, I saw them at the warehouse back in the day, of course, I didn't have the money. And uh, that's the system. It's so small. Now, now it, it does uh, CDs and cartridges. Yes, cartridge port there, batteries there. Wow. Control ports has a nice, it's a uh, metal on top. Nice, uh, nice hinge there. And open, uh, and a nice display right there. Um, with the display, I can tell you if it's open or mm -hmm. if it's reading or not. Um, these guys are pretty hard to find working. You know, to say CDs in general are going up in value, mm -hmm. and this is kind of what everybody sought after because you know a lot of collectors play their games, and uh, it doesn't take a lot of space on the shelf. And so you know, a lot of these you know second, third generation of the same unit. Smaller, sleeker, everybody likes that one because you know they can have two or three game systems in the same space on the shelf. Okay, well that's great, but what the hell is this? Well, I know a little bit about it. 
But I do know that it's a small boom, and it came out in the 70s, and that's it. And I know that this gun would not fly today on the shelves of that target. Check on that sucker, eats. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if you were addressing it a little bit later, but the Channel F controllers physically did not look more phallic. If people want to go back and search that console, that is astounding. That's more challenging than the gun, I think. Oh, they were lonely, lonely creators. <laughs> Yeah, next one we want to set up there? Uh, sure. This uh, video shows, um, it's an abridged episode of, one, of the first in our series of Punch Out episodes for Awesome Video Games, which is the first show that I talked about that was like a Bill and Ted video game throwback thing. And then it ends with our more, uh, the show that we're doing now. Okay, guys, 
Come on in, check out my new room. Whoa, cool! It's the first episode of our... Oh, hi. Uh, welcome to our new show. This is called uh, Video Games Are Awesome. Well, I'm working on a tagline. It's like... <laughs> welcome to Video Games Are Awesome. Why? Because they have... Oh! Who? These guys over here. Oh! What? Awesome video games. <laughs> oh, bacon. Ah, uh, he didn't drop any. Oh, uh, where's my tongue? Oh, not at all. <laughs> what does that mean when you're playing poker with a group of men? <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Series by simulating it in NHL 2011. Yeah! Spoilers, uh, the real one didn't turn out that well. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 